Hello everyone. For today's video, I'm going to be doing a tutorial to show all of you Corsair owners how you can change an RGB profile to a different color. So let's just say you find a Corsair profile online. You really like the way it looks. You like the way all the uh, waves go on it and you like the way it moves, right? But you don't necessarily like the color. Today, I'm gonna be showing you guys how you can change any Corsair IQ profile to a different color to match your RGB setup. Now I will say starting out that this is going to be a very long process for some profiles, depending on how complex they are. Uh, this is definitely not an easy thing to do, but if it's something that you want badly and you want to do, I'm gonna give you the tools that you need to be able to do that. So. Let's get right into this tutorial. So I'm going to begin this tutorial by going to Corsair's website. And so let's just say I really like this profile right here, the Modern Warfare profile. I really like the way the fans move or I really like the design that is on the keyboard. So I want to use this design on my setup, but I don't want it to be blue. Let's say I want it to be green. Um, we're gonna go ahead and change this from blue to green. So we're gonna download this profile. Okay, so now you can see that the profile is imported here. So we, if we just click on that and we click on our keyboard, you can see we have the Call of Duty design on our setup or on our equipment now. So our goal here is to change the blue colored lighting to a green color or whatever color that you guys prefer. So the first thing I like to do, we need, we are gonna need to go layer by layer. So one layer at a time, changing all of the blue coloring to a green coloring. So the first thing I like to do is I like to click on this first layer and you can see there's white and blue nodes here. So these three blue nodes look like they're the same color. I don't change any of the white color nodes or the black ones because those are neutral colors and those can just be recycled for every profile color that we're ever going to use. So I leave those ones alone and the first thing I do is I click into our first blue one and I like to click on these three nodes here and I like to get a bunch of different colored green nodes or green colors to pick from in our color palette. So you can do that by clicking in here and just clicking over here on the green side and clicking on add and then maybe drag that a little bit towards the center here where it's lighter. Click add, drag it towards the center, add, drag it towards the center, add. And that will give you a bunch of different colored tones for your green color to choose from. So we're gonna go through here and we're gonna change all of these blue nodes to a lighter colored green node. So I'm gonna click on this blue node, click our color palette, choose a light colored green. Click on this one, color palette, light colored green. So now we've fully switched this top layer from blue to a green color. So we're just gonna move on. This next layer is just white it's just a static white layer so i'm going to skip that going on to this next one you can see this is a static blue color so i can either choose to sub this out with a color that i chose here or if i go back we can keep this same level of brightness and just click on a green color over here so you can see the brightness doesn't move and i can choose a green color and it doesn't have to be any specific type of green color. We're just changing it from blue to green. So you can do it that way as well. Another thing you really need to be a little bit uh, wary of is if you click on a color node, you can see it pops up this little window where you select your colors. You want to be very, very careful not to click off of this window into this preview screen because it will deselect all of the selected keys. Let me just show you an example on a different layer here. So I'm gonna go up to this static white layer. 
So if I were to accidentally click off of this onto the preview window, you can see it deselects the keys that were selected. So if you do that on a really complex, let me just reselect these real quick. If you were to do that on a really complex layer like this, it would deselect all of these selected keys and you would have a really hard time going back and selecting the exact keys that were already set previously. So try not to click in this window. Otherwise you might have to just start all over. So working with this layer, um, you can see there's a darker blue and a lighter blue here. I'm just gonna go to the lighter blue, choose our light green, go to this darker blue, and I'm gonna choose this kind of medium dark green here. So moving on, this layer is white. I'm gonna leave that alone. So here we got white, a really light blue, and some other light blues that look to be the same. So this blue, this blue, and that blue look to be the same color blue. And this one and this one look to be really light colored blues that are about the same as well. So I'm gonna click on this one and I'm gonna choose this green option here. Uh, maybe this green option, uh, this one. Let's go with this one. So because these three color nodes are the same color, I'm just gonna copy the hex code and this just makes it a little bit faster. So I can click in the next one paste in the hex code with control V. Click this one, paste it in. So that's just a quicker way of doing it so you're not having to click up into the color palette. Uh, moving on to these lighter color blues, I'm gonna use the light green. I copy the hex code. I'm gonna go into this next one, paste it, because they're about the same. Okay, so we have three layers left here to change. So if we click on this, you can see we have some lighter blue that seems to match on the outside and a darker in the middle. So here I'm gonna choose a lighter green. Copy this. I click over here, paste that in. And then I'm going to change this middle one to a darker colored green. You can also just use this color picker if you want, if you don't wanna waste a bunch of time. <clears throat> and if you're not needing it to be an exact color. So moving on to this next one, we're gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna use the color picker here. Here I'm gonna also use, actually I'm gonna click my color palette and use this lighter green. Copy the hex code, paste it into this one, which matches. Okay, click off of that. So just one lighting layer left. So if we, take a look it's just a static color just a one color here and because it's down on the brightness here I'm just gonna keep this and I'm gonna use this color picker to match that brightness and we are all done with all of our lighting layers we now have a profile that was changed from blue to green at least on our RGB keyboard if you have other devices, obviously you'll need to do those as well. So clicking on my mouse, you can see there's two layers here that are blue. So this static color, I'm gonna change it from a green to a, or a blue to a green. And same here with this one, from a, from a blue to a green. So that's that completes the mouse. Coming over here to the, a, the ST100 uh, headset stand. So there is a blue colored wave and it looks like it's just on one lighting zone. So we can actually apply this to all of our lighting zones and we can change the color of it. So we'll change this to a green color, copy the hex code there and put it on this other node as well. Okay. So there we've kind of expanded on the profile that was imported. Some profiles that you import, they're not going to be compatible for all of your devices or all of the lighting zones on your devices. So you'll kind of have to tweak some things to make it work for your setup and your gear. So going over the LT100 starter kit, you can see that there is no lighting effects for this device, which means the profile 
that was imported does not support these devices. It's not a problem. We can just go ahead and go back to our headset stand. We can actually click on the three dots that are on this wave layer and we can save it to our library and we can go over to our LT100 starter kit, go to our lighting effects and then down here at the bottom you have lighting library and we can just import that color onto our equipment. Now you might need to make some tweaks so that the effect looks good on your devices. So um, that could be just like changing the time. Instead of going one second, we can have it do two seconds. That way it actually expands the whole distance of our device. You know? So you'll have to do some tweaking for some profiles that don't have support for your equipment. So same thing here. With our MM1 or MM700 RGB mouse pad, if we go to our lighting library, you can see we don't have the option to bring over the wave effect that was on our other devices. That's because if we go to apply an effect to this mouse pad and you go to custom, you can see that wave effect or lighting type is not available for this device. So you would have to use a different uh, type of lighting. So we're gonna go through and just add a gradient onto this. Just a simple three node gradient. So I'm gonna make it green out there. And then for this node, I'm gonna make it a lighter color green. Copy the hex code on the first node and paste it on the last one. So now we have kind of a, a two-tone green colored gradient on our mouse pad. But once you've hit all of your devices, you now successfully have changed your RGB effect to a different color. So once you've taken all of these steps through the process, you should have successfully changed an RGB profile from one color to the desired color that you guys want. I hope this video helped you guys learn a little something about Corsair IQ and you guys are able to tweak things around to your guys' liking to match your RGB setup. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one.